Albert Einstein, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, John F. Kennedy, Tony Robbins, Michael Phelps, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. What else do they have in common? Well, they all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that, do you? You know what you hear even less about? The successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm an attorney, not a doctor, a lifelong student, not a coach. I'm also the creator of Cortography, a patent pending system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your superpowers, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest superpowers. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you, too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka. Welcome to episode 73 of ADHD for Smart Ass Women. Let's start today by reading an Apple podcast review from Jay Soyo, who's in the United States. And the title is, This Podcast is Spot On for Women with ADHD. Listening to this podcast was so affirming. I had no idea that so many of my habits, skills, and challenges were attributable to my ADHD. Love the variety of topics, and Tracy is as entertaining as she is real. Well, thank you, Jay Soyo, for that. I love the gold stars, and you are so right. The most important thing that we can do is figure out how our specific ADHD brains work. You know, there's a reason why we do what we do. And once we know what that is, we can build tremendous workarounds that allow us to be wildly successful. We just need to understand our own brain because what works for me may not work for you. Thank you again for your kind comments, and I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to write your review and post it. It makes a huge difference and means that we're all working together to change other ADHD women's lives by getting the word out as to what ADHD is and what ADHD isn't. So let's get started with the podcast, and this is going to be a fun one. So one of our Facebook members, we have a Facebook group called ADHD for Smartass Women, and I think we're at, I don't know, like 7,500 members at this point. It's growing rapidly. One of our Facebook members, Rachel D., she started a thread about a month ago on ADHD life hacks, and it was so popular. I think there were 280 some odd comments on it that it was so popular that I posted in the thread that I was going to make a podcast out of her post. There are so many good tips on her post. So what I did is I culled the most popular ones because we can't be here for hours at a time. So here we go. As I mentioned, Rachel started the post and she started it by talking about the fact that she has no closet doors on any closets because she says that if she did clean clothes would never end up in the closet. She also has a huge bathroom clock that she can see from anywhere she stands in the bathroom. And she said that people laugh at it, but she hasn't been late for spending too much time in the shower in years. The addition of that bathroom clock was life changing for Amy F as well, who offered that she could never never understand why people didn't have a bathroom clock in their bathroom. Like, how else do you know you've been scrolling Facebook in the bath for over an hour? Yeah, Amy, I think many of us can relate to that. Amanda W. shared that she has a shower timer in her shower. That was a game changer for me. And I did a podcast on time management where I talk about this exactly. I'll make sure to link it in the show notes. So what I notice for myself is if I make a game of it, if I'm challenged, i.e. I tell myself you only have five minutes, right, to be out, you have to beat the timer, I stay focused and I don't drift off. Amanda also keeps bathroom cleaner in all of her bathrooms. That's a big one for me too. She has a garbage can in all rooms and she also keeps the clutter to a minimum because clutter outside clutters her mind. Tess W times her morning routine. 
Her whole life, she thought she would get ready in 15 minutes. When she timed herself, she realized how way off she was. It was an hour to get ready in the morning. No wonder she was always late. So this is a good reminder from Tess. Set the timer from the moment you get up until the minute you leave the door. Miranda D. said, this is smart. I'm always like, eh, 15 minutes for everything. Doesn't matter if I'm getting ready, driving somewhere, etc. In my mind, it's always about 15 minutes. <laughs> Miranda, I can so relate to that comment. No concept of time whatsoever. Kelsey L. listens to music to get ready in the morning. The songs help her to keep track of the passing time because she knows each song is roughly three minutes long. Other members chimed in that they do this with Netflix and short podcasts as well. Kelly L. said, One of the best things for me has been putting up a key hook near our main door. I've trained myself to put my keys on the hook as soon as I walk in the door. And now I never have to look for them as I'm trying to get out of the house. So many people like that comment, and several members said that they adopted some permutation of this as well. It reminds me of Francesca Rizzo. She did a podcast with me, and one of her organization tips was to put your keys on a long lanyard and clip them to your bag. That way, you never have to remove your keys from your bag. Brilliant, huh? You will never lose them again. Kate C. has a key bowl by her door, a pair of glasses for each television that she keeps with the remotes. She also has cosmetic pouches and pencil cases that she uses for her bags. When she switches her bags, she just grabs the pouches and pops them in the bag. She also has separate home and work laptop chargers. Oh my gosh, I always forget my laptop charger when I travel. Terry R. goes one step further, and she has a laptop charger in her bedroom, her living room, and her office. That way, her computer is always charged. Jamie C. travels a lot for work. She would always forget things, so eventually she bought all separate things, so all she has to pack for trips is just her outfits and underwear. Jammies, toiletries, jewelry, hair products, and makeup all stay in her bag. So those are the things that she's bought. They never leave her suitcase. And she says it's life-changing. Chris K has her morning and bedtime to-do list written on the bathroom mirror. This helps her budget her time and tasks. There's a company, you know, called ThinkBoard that has clear dry erase sheets that you can affix to anything. And it comes with a dry erase expo marker. And apparently these sheets, they erase cleanly. I just bought one, by the way. They erase cleanly and they have full adhesive backing. But when you remove them, you don't get any residue that's left behind. I think those would be great kind of even on your walls where you could use the markers. But I think on the mirror, you can use a dry erase marker as well. I'm not sure. You better check that on a small space. But I love that idea because I have noticed with myself when I'm running late and I'm discombobulated, even simple things I sometimes forget. So I love the idea of that to-do list. Janet M. had an epiphany when her dentist was ready to kick her out as a patient because she was always late. So what Janet realized is that she was wired to walk out the door according to the calendar time. So what she started to do was list the walkout time, not the appointment time, on her calendar. And she hasn't been late since. So what she does is she adds the travel reminder time to the calendar, so the time she has to leave. So if the dentist appointment is at 2, the calendar is marked for 1.30, and she marks it dentist, at 1.30, but then in parentheses, she has at 2. So the time on the calendar is always her leave time. That's brilliant, isn't it? I need to start doing that because I too have that mindset. It's the time that's on my calendar is when I'm supposed to leave. And in reality, that's why I'm late. Okay. Amanda asks, I use my Google Homes for a lot of things. You can ask for timers or what time it is. You can ask for the weather, like what amount of layers should I wear? And she can set reminders, et cetera, on Google Home. She also has a shopping list that she can verbally add to while walking around in the kitchen. She also said, I learned about the remember feature. Like you give Google Home a keyword. Remember the furnace filter was changed on April 9th. And then later you can ask, hey, Google, what did I tell you to remember about the furnace filter? And she tells you. You can ask her for the driving times and traffic reports, especially if you take the 30 seconds to add your home and work address into Google Maps. Then you just ask her, what is the traffic to work? And she will give you the exact time in minutes. I love that. 
CCB, she tapes her list to the door that she's going to walk out of so she doesn't forget them. How many times have you made a shopping list? Literally, it's on paper, and then you leave it on the counter. Like, that is my life. (laughs) Chris M., as soon as she creates the login for any free trial app or software, she sets a reminder for a day before the trial ends. Samantha M. has replaced her chair at her desk with an exercise ball. She now bounces while she's responding to emails. I like that idea. Allison S. says, I'm constantly making lists of things I need to do, remember, etc. But they were often mixed together and I'd end up just creating similar lists over and over again without really checking them consistently since it was often just the actual act of making the list that helped me clear my mind enough to initiate tasks. Yeah, I do that too. Then I finally sat one day and went through my lists on my phone to organize and consolidate them, and it's been so helpful. I split them into major categories and then smaller categories within each list, and then I break bigger items down even more into individual tasks of what I need to do to complete them. So, for example, I have a list of things I need to buy, things I need to do, people I need to contact. My buy list has a section for the grocery store, for clothing items, for Costco, and for things I need to search for and buy online. Then my grocery list is broken down into food items versus supplies, so I know right where to list something in the moment I think of it, and also right where I need to reference it when I'm actually in that area of the store buying things. On my to-do list, I have a section for household chores, laundry, dishes, vacuuming. I have a section for life organization tasks, journaling, stretching, practicing my guitar, and then general short-term and longer-term tasks. I have to get gas. I have to pay rent. I have to look for a new apartment. I have to do my taxes. It's mostly the long-term tasks that then get broken down into baby steps. Splitting them up by type of task helps me figure out what kinds of things I have the energy or motivation to do when I feel productive. Basically, making lists like this, it helps me with memory and executive function issues by tapping me into hyperfocus more easily. It allows me to dive into a particular list and start crossing off the things easier or, you know, the low hanging fruit items. It helps me keep track of things, feel more productive and build up momentum when I actually have the time or energy to do things so I can maximize on those opportunities. So I guess. What Allison is saying is instead of then sitting down and making a list for, you know, when she feels productive, like she can get work done and then losing that momentum, she goes right to the lists that are already made. I love this idea. And I've thought so many times that I need to create lists for those things that I have to do regularly, like shopping. And I want that shopping list organized by where the item is in the store, right? We should have a Costco versus a Trader Joe's versus a Whole Foods list, you know, And we typically buy the same things every time anyway, right? So this makes perfect sense. Like one of the things that I'm thinking of right now is I'd love to make pasta, but the only place I can find that double zero Italian pasta flour is Whole Foods. Yet every time I go to Whole Foods, I forget. I forget to buy it. So I'm making special trips just for pasta flour, which is a huge waste of time. I'd also love to have a list for, say, entertaining. Like, what are the things that I always forget? Well, I don't know about you. I always forget ice. I always forget wine. I'm not a wine drinker. I prefer a cocktail. And I forget flowers. And then I'd love a list for, like, household chores when I'm entertaining. So I can tell the kids, go set the table or go clean the bathroom. And I can give them a to-do list of what cleaning the bathroom actually means because, Honestly, if I don't spell it out for them, they never do it. And they never do it the same way. They never do it the way that I want it done. I love this idea. I need a to-do list or a, a task list for cleaning the damn bathroom. Okay. If there is anyone out there who has done exactly this and they have a system that they've built that works really well for listing out your life and they have specific apps that they've used that makes this really user-friendly, I would love to hear from you. You know, I keep looking at like checklist type apps to create this, but nothing seems particularly intuitive or helpful for me. So 
This would be a wonderful podcast topic. I'd love to knock this out for myself and then be able to talk listeners through how I did it so that they too can do it for themselves. It would be a great podcast. Okay. Kelly L. and Allison S. recommended our grocery. So there's our grocery list. It keeps all your grocery lists synchronized on all the smartphones in your home. It's free and it's for the iPad, the iPhone, Apple Watch, Android, Amazon Alexa, etc. It's, oh God. I just said the A, I thought my Alexa was going to go off, but I think she's behaving. So it's a list app that allows multiple users to collaborate, which means, this is what Kelly L is saying, which means my husband can add things to the grocery list too, which is really helpful. The best part though, is things move down to a separate section when you cross them off instead of disappearing. So before I head out of the store, I go through the list of crossed off items to see if there are any staples I've forgotten. Yes, I could put my double zero flower there. Kelly L says it saved me multiple trips so many times. Okay. Elizabeth B has created a not now list. When I'm working on anything and something comes to mind that I need to research, decide on, buy, do, clean, tell someone, I tell myself that's not what I'm doing right now. And then I put it on a physical not now list. Later, when I have a minute, I look it over. I cross off things that were just distractions and I move those things that weren't distractions to either a project or task list. And she also has a worry list and she handles that the same way. Jill D said, I don't close the laundry room door or shut off the light while I have laundry running. Yeah, I don't either. That's, that's a good point. So I remember to come back and move it to the dryer or put it away. I keep a basket on top of the dryer and clothes get folded and put into the basket immediately out of the dryer and put away. The basket has to stay empty unless I'm currently using it. Dishwasher is emptied in the morning so everyone can rinse and load their dishes throughout the day. No dishes in the sink ever and no big dish pile. (laughs) I love this. Jill D has also trained her dog to find and retrieve her phone, keys, and the TV remote. Oh my gosh. Okay, Jill, you need to tell us how you do that. Jill's profile picture is a Dalmatian. So I'm wondering if that is the dog that she has trained. That is hilarious. You know, my Apple Watch is probably my best ADHD hack. And what I use it for most often is to put an alarm for the washer and the dryer I no longer wash laundry three and four times before it gets out of the laundry room. Okay, Kathy Kay mentioned having a tile in her wallet. They're wonderful. So she never forgets which purse it's in. Another member then mentioned that she has put them on her AirPods, which is what I need to put on my kids' AirPods. I am so tired of them losing them. There's something about AirPods where you can't use find my friend or whatever they call it when they're dead. Tiles, by the way, are Bluetooth enabled devices that you can put on everything to make it findable. They are great. Kelly W raves about the Apple Watch. Oh, here we go. Especially the find my phone feature. I have a whole podcast on the Apple Watch. As I said, it's the best ADHD hack I own and I live by the alarms. Tracy, um, oh, that's me. <laughs> I wanted to mention the Ellie Grid. The Ellie Grid organizes your medication, your supplements, your vitamins. It reminds you to take your pills and tells you what pills you should be taking. It also tracks your progress over time and it builds reports. Now, I'm not sure if it tracks symptoms, but that would make it a perfect 10, wouldn't it? I've not used the Ellie Grid because honestly, no medication or supplement works for me. But when I tried... I constantly forgot whether I had taken meds or not. So when I saw this, I thought it was just brilliant. So it's a pill organizer and reminder that's high tech. It's a little pricey. I think it would also be a great option for seniors who have a lot of medication to take. Ashley Key recommended a bullet journal. And this is what she said. She calls it my super ADHD bullet journal. I've gutted the premise. It started off beautiful, lovely colors and textures, neat graphs. So I think what she's saying is she she gutted the premise that it was going to be beautiful. And so it boiled down to if I'm thinking it, if it's a to-do, 
a want, a task to track, notes from a phone call, I date that shit, label the page number, and put it in the table of contents. It looks like a psychopath's notebook, but I've never been more organized with the chaotic thoughts running around my brain like a nest of baby squirrels. Plus, I spent like 45 minutes picking out which notebook, and every time I see it and realize I'm using it, I get this surge of pride. RIP all my other half-filled-in notebooks, a table of contents for your thoughts. Just think of that. And if you don't know the uh, individual, the gentleman who invented the bullet journal, he is ADHD. And I keep saying I am going to really make an effort and try this, but then I get so overwhelmed with how to even set it up. So Ashley K, if you're listening or if anyone else is listening and uses the bullet journal and has a really, really simple step-by-step system on how to set it up, I don't need to watch a video. It's literally just one, two, three. I'm willing to try it again. Stein L recommended the Minimalist Bullet Journals Facebook group. I just joined that as well. Denny P says, each morning, I take five to 10 minutes to think about what I want to get done. Then I take a piece of paper and a pencil and I write down time blocks of 30 minutes each. Example, nine o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and I write what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. Then she also suggests the Pomodoro technique has been a game changer for her. Yes, it's been a game changer for me. When she can't start cleaning, she sets a timer for 10 minutes and she does as much as she can. I almost always shower with my wristwatch on and I set the timer for 10 minutes. Yep, it's like a shower clock. I noticed that my anxiety levels go down when my house is clean and organized and I trained my brain to like cleaning because I know that I'm going to feel better when I see the end result. Before, after pictures are amazing. I think Denny said that she actually keeps them on her phone because they they increase her dopamine. I became a minimalist. I love decluttering and now I think twice before buying something. A pile of dishes, question mark. No problem for someone with OCD like me. Every time I feel like washing my hands, I would wash a dish or two instead. Fly Lady has been very helpful. Although I don't do it anymore, it helped me to build the habit of doing a load of laundry every day. Fly Lady, it's a website. It's very kind of, um, oh, how do I explain it? The website is very dated, but she's amazing. And she has all these ideas on basically organizing yourself and your home. She probably has ADHD. Okay, going back to Denny, she says, I fold my clothes the Conmary way. I always put away laundry ASAP. I prepare my clothes and everything that I'm going to need tomorrow, the night before. Denny also keeps these items in her desk at work, which I think is brilliant. She always has money for when she forgets her wallet or her lunch. Probably that should be an and, her wallet and her lunch. She has an umbrella for when she forgets to check the weather forecast, and she has a deodorant in her desk for when, I guess, she forgets to put on her deodorant at home. KDD adopted the saying, progress is better than perfection. In the past, overwhelm was a major source of procrastination. She's finally accepted that putting away one thing doesn't mean that she's committed to cleaning her whole bedroom. She can do just one thing. Maintenance is now so much easier. Ah, Becca Z is the one who she takes before and after pictures every time she cleans just because she likes to look at them. I didn't even think of that feeding into the positive emotion, but that drives the ADHD brain, doesn't it? Jamie C puts out everything she's going to wear the night before, and then she puts her bag and everything she needs to take with her at the door. I've mentioned before that when I go to bed really late, I will make a point of <laughs> going to bed in my workout clothes just because I know then if I wake up late, there are no excuses. I'm just going to run into the gym and get it done and over with. So I get that. I think there was one other woman who said that she has certain clothing for her her son that is wrinkle resistant and she will make him go to sleep in it when she knows that you know it's going to be a tough morning. 
Okay, Lucy N, analog clock. Seeing the passage of time makes a big difference. When I was in graduate school, before I knew I was blessed with this privilege, ADHD, it took me exactly 20 minutes to get from my door to my first class. So the clocks in my apartment were all set 22 minutes fast. It worked. I was rarely late. A friend asked me about it, and I explained, if I leave at the time I was supposed to be there, I will get there on time. He made an odd face. This works for me, too, because I'm all frenetic running around, and I always forget that the clocks are set fast, which is one of the blessings of our ADHD brains, right? We forget that we set them ahead, even though they've been set ahead for years. Jessie L. says, I've given my spouse and a few good friends permission to lie to me about when we need to leave, so I'll be ready on time. You know, I have told my husband for 20 plus years since we've been married that he has permission to lie to me. And to this day, he still doesn't. And I always think, even though he's never lied to me about time, I always think, well, maybe he's lying to me and he's really given me the wrong time, (laughs) but he never does. So if we're late, I just blame him. I told you, you had to lie to me and you didn't. Okay, Pamela L. I set a timer on my computer that says start next day tasks. This starts around 7.30 p.m. and involves me setting up anything that will make my life easier to get out the door at a proper time the next day. So I prep coffee and I set the timer on it. I make sure work shirts are in my backpack. I take lunches out of the freezer. I charge, oh my God, she puts her, so you must, Pamela, make your lunches in advance. Oh my gosh, how organized of you. And so then you take them out of the freezer. She charges her bike lights. This way, I'm not in a panic the next day. In regard to alarms and reminders, never, ever just turn them off when they ring. Always hit the snooze button instead. I cannot even count the amount of times an alarm went off. I shut it off. I tried to wrap up whatever I was doing. I got caught up and then completely forgot the alarm even happened. Yes, yes, and yes. I totally agree, Pamela. Pamela also says, keep hitting snooze on it until you can turn it off after you've completed the task. Yep. And that is one of the things that I love about my Apple Watch. It just makes it so easy to do that. But like you, Pam, I had to learn how to not turn off the alarm. Okay. Corey K, for cleaning. I have to keep the cleaning supplies right next to what they are for or I'll never clean it. The sink stove has a washcloth hanging for wiping down after I wash dishes and cook. The bathroom has a magic eraser on the sink, so I will wipe down the sink. Oh, I didn't know you can use a magic eraser from the sink. I just hide the sponge behind the toothbrush cup so when I think, ew, fiance didn't rinse the sink after shaving, (laughs) I can just wipe it down real fast. Kristen S., I can easily spend like three hours hyper-focused on cleaning or showering or whatever. I set a timer for 20 minutes before I start cleaning the apartment. If I'm not done when the timer is up, it beeps at me. So I can finish the task, but I can't spend a ton of time finishing up because the beeping annoys me. It keeps my task with a, a reasonable time frame. I do the same thing for showering and getting ready in the morning, walking the dogs, etc. The timer keeps me conscious of how much time is actually going by. Yes, Kristen, I totally can relate to that comment. Okay, this one is a little long. It is the last one, but I thought it was so good that I am going to read it in its entirety. It's from Tyrion R. I had four kids in six years, and I'm a costume maker for theater and film. I know all, she has a million L's about clutter. I wish this was something we were taught as a life skill at school, along with the psychology of what not doing it creates. Start with one room. Let's say your laundry or linen cupboard. Buy rectangular plastic baskets and store everything in that cupboard in designated baskets. Conmarie fold bed sheets, Conmarie fold towels, travel items, inflatable pillows, power adapters, etc. Pet supplies, extra toiletries. I always have extra shampoo, conditioner, tissue boxes, toothpaste, etc. And so on and so on. Then move to a new room. Every cupboard in every room uses baskets to store like items and label your baskets. When you're finished, you will open a door or a cabinet and know what is in every basket. 
Every basket can be accessed with one hand, and not a single thing is piled on top of another thing ever again. If buying more of something won't fit in the designated basket, then you either really don't need it, or you need to get rid of something in that basket already. And it's okay. When you first start, you might have too much of a like item to fit in a single basket. Let this be the first stage of sorting and culling. Just get everything in that cupboard into how many baskets will fit neatly in that cupboard. Then start by going through one basket at a time. Don't let yourself stop because you thought too far ahead and got overwhelmed about how long it's going to take to do every room or resistance thoughts like that. Just start. You can only own what will fit in the amount of baskets that will fit in that cupboard. Oh my God, I love this. It is a simple truth that less stuff means less everything of the negative stuff, dust, mental noise, anxiety, cleaning, not being able to find things, right? But applying this truth is so much harder in practice because we live in our feelings. Preach Tyrion. And the spiral effect of letting your stuff get out of control is so real. And once it starts, can take years for you to even try to change. It's actually never out of our control, but our emotional dysregulation makes it feel like it is. Be kind, stay on task, be patient with the process, let it heal you as you go. When you find baskets you like, Buy them in a range of sizes, but with big cupboards, try to stick to larger baskets for uniformity and best use of your space. No stacking unless the baskets are on slides, like drawers, essentially. You shouldn't have to lift something up to get to something else ever again. Your label maker is your best friend. Big font, simple functions, no extra steps. You can do this. You will, over time, recognize how it's changing you. You will fall in love with the process because it makes you feel better. But by better, I mean cared for. Doing this makes you feel healthier. And the feedback loop it creates by sending yourself messages that you deserve to feel better is what is truly meant by the term self-care. Fall in love with behaviors that show yourself that how you feel matters. I really believe our hoarding and cluttering, real hoarding, not just the I own a lot of stuff because I use it for work type of clutter, is a type of self-harm to an extent. You deserve more than to stay in that space. One room at a time. One cupboard at a time. Buy uniform baskets. Put contents of cupboards into baskets. Go through one basket at a time. Label, donate the excess, don't rush, and don't stop. Tyrion, I think this is brilliant. I have this one bathroom closet that has shampoo, conditioner, soaps, razor blades, thermometers, nail polish, sunblock, like just about every pharmaceutical or sundry that you could think of, and I'm constantly organizing it, and it's always a mess. I'm going to go get some clear baskets from the container store, some big colorful labels, and I'm going to do this for my dog's area, for the laundry room, every place in my home where things don't stand up so they're constantly falling down, like that bathroom cabinet I was just talking about. I love this idea of just being able to grab the baskets with all the stuff rather than a few items and then having them all fall out or get forgotten and then they're all scattered throughout the house. I absolutely love this idea. Thank you so much for this, Tyrion. You know, one of the other things that I just thought of, again, is we have this new Focusmate group that is specifically for ADHD for smart-ass women. And Taylor Jacobson over at Focusmate has gifted us three months free. I think that our free term is going to expire. I believe it's July 28th. This would be the perfect thing to use. It's it's like a, a body double. So you show up to Focusmate. Let's say you want to clean a cabinet. You announce to the person, you've, you're on video, you announce to the person you're going to clean your cabinet. You start the timer. You have 50 minutes to organize that particular cabinet. After the 50 minutes, you debrief each other for five minutes, and then you go on your merry way. And you could schedule these Focusmate sessions for, you know, one a day, three a day, one a week, 
you know, one every other week just to get these projects done. I love this idea. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tyrion. And you can find more information about how to sign up for our ADHD for Smart Ass Women Focus Mate group where you're going to work with other smart ass ADHD women. You can find that in our Facebook group by joining our Facebook Blah, 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 by joining our Facebook group, which is ADHD for Smart Ass Women. Okay, that's what I have for you for this week. I can barely talk anymore. As always, you're listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. If you like this podcast, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their brilliant ADHD brains work so that they too can discover their amazing strengths. We love your reviews. They totally help in that regard. One more thing, if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, please go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com. You can leave me an audio message there or reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you liked what you heard, we sure would appreciate a review. And not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, well, that's also the name of our free Facebook group. Go look it up. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. We'd love to have you join us. You can also find all my details over at tracyoutsuka.com. Don't forget, I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.